only 21% of employees are engaged at their work. And that results in nearly $8 trillion in lost productivity. The Gallup State of the Global Workplace report shows how business critical finding and retaining the right talent is for organisations. It's, uh, it's that kind of journalistic intent and <laughs> mindset, which is just like, you know, we're, we're the ones who just go around and find the people and just then capture and curate that content. And, and that is what marketing is about, really, not just employer marketing, that's what marketing is. So being able to provide the resources and support to be able to do those things is really, really key. And it's actually about my journey and hopefully helping entrepreneurs. So I created the podcast because I just felt in the employer marketing, employer branding world, there was a big space for this. Hi and welcome back to the Employer Content Marketing Pod. Delighted to be back in the studio again and today I'm chatting with Raf. Raf is a mental health campaigner and I'm talking to him about the role of storytelling and content in promoting the causes that he's very, very passionate about. Let's get on with the chat. Dreaming, floating high, the mind's right shut and the feeling's right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feeling's right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feeling's right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feeling's right. Hi Raph, how you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. So it's delighted to be back in back in the studio again. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure um, to be here. It's been a bit, been a while. We've been planning it, isn't it? It has. We've had like, had plenty of conversations, you know, o- over the months. And um, one of the thing, one of the reasons I wanted to get you onto the podcast is is all the stuff you you're posting on on LinkedIn. You're definitely a, a very vocal campaigner for what, what you're about. Um, so just had to get you on, on the pod. So let's um, let's start off with just a bit of an intro. Tell us a bit about yourself. So um, I'm, I'm Raf. I work for Signet Healthcare, which is a leading independent provider for mental health and learning disability services. Yeah. Um, just to give you an idea of how diverse the services are, as, as you know, Chris, we've got like over 140 now. When I first started, we had 23, but we have services ranging from kind of medium secure um, mm. you know hospital uh, environments to um, community services and uh, okay. you know the, the kind of diverse range of service lines that we have really makes a good opportunity to see what good looks like uh, you know up and down the country and, yeah. and the stories that you come across as well you know it, it really okay. it's really inspiring and mm. in essence my role is all about um, ensuring that people have a voice at every level of the organization okay. and particularly service users and residents as well as family carers yeah. and also providing a level of independent challenge to um, you know our board and our senior management team from a lived experience perspective okay nice and in particular co-production is kind of a, the biggest space you probably ought to occupy isn't it so yeah yeah tell us a bit about um, Tell us a bit about co-production. So, in essence, co-production um, is what, what what you'd normally expect to see in kind of... I often t- kind of describe it as a much more enhanced level of involvement and engagement. Okay. Um, so, you know, we would come up with a concept traditionally and then we would take it to service users or customers or whoever it is, dependent on what sector you're in. And I guess that can be seen as consultation. Um, and sometimes you can take people's feedback on board and even make changes. And mm. I guess that would count as involvement. The difference with co-production is um, seeing each other as equals from the outset. Nice. And, um, you know, using that relationship built on trust, built on, on respect, built on equality to make meaningful change together. Yeah. And um, I, I think that element from the outset is, is, is something that's really key. I mean, um, people argue over what co-production is and you know, it varies from degree to degree. There's limitations based on you know, practicalities dependent on what kind of service line you're in, the level of security. Yeah, yeah. Um, and co-production extends far beyond health and social care. I mean, a good community example of co-production would be Neighbourhood Watch, for example. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, I, I've, I've done like a master's in this subject <laughs> area and I'm still kind of confused as to a, a clear definition. I mean, um, you know, one thing I would say is people are, are quite um, positive about co-production and, and it's the impact that it's had on the sector and there, there, there's also a school of thought that you know it's another form of tokenism and ticking a box um, right and it's a, the new buzzword um, and, and I, I think that it's just important that we t- kind of take a step back and um, maybe just reflect on the impact that it's had and the mm. outcomes of co-production and I would say that co-production within the context of health and social care has definitely made a positive difference and yeah. I think it's something that we should celebrate. 
No, definitely, it's it's. I mean, it, it's relevant. It's, it's relevant, but particularly for what you do, is is relevant for lots of sectors and is around talking to your customers. You know, really finding out with them what what they need, and rather than the top down approach of going, in theory, this is going to work, and then trying to implement it. It's um, it's a really nice way, and that as you say that that collaborative approach is is true collaborative collaboration, not tick box collaboration from what, what, I, what I've seen and what you do. And I think when you talk about the stories that come from it, you know, you, I've, I've been involved in hearing and watching a lot of stories come out of, um, you know, Signet Healthcare, and in particular in the co-production space with, with your initiative Music to Empower. And there are some properly goosebumps, heartwarming, you know, heartwarming stories there. And you know, ultimately, it's it's the reason why um, people are in the profession of mental health and social care is to is to make those stories happen and make those positive stories. It's definitely happen. a reminder, isn't it? Isn't it yeah. When you when you watch them. And yeah, I, I I definitely think so. And I think you know when we talk about kind of music to empower, it's a good example of being able to kind of not showcase people's talents and abilities, mm. and it, it, it's. It's a paradigm shift in essence of moving away from a very traditional medicalized model of, you know, this is Chris, you know, this is his symptoms, this is his diagnosis, and this is what we're going to treat with, and you know, psychotropic medications. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the more recovery orientated model is now focusing on, you know, this is Chris. He may have the set of symptoms which, you know, forget the label, um, but actually he also has assets and can live a meaningful life beyond his diagnosis without mm. necessarily being symptom free. Mm. And I guess music to empower is something that really brings that to the forefront. Um, it's not something new that we're trying to pedal out um, in, in the sense that music is the oldest form of therapy dating back over a thousand <laughs> years ago. Yeah, I mean, true. when the first form of kind of hospital, if you like, was uh, you know, created in modern day um, Baghdad, as we know it now and um, you know it, it, they didn't have things like clozapine and dbt therapies you know they had things like aromatherapy and music therapy yeah, okay, and it's, yeah. uh, it's also the longest running form of therapy as well so you know it's not something it's something older and, and it's really important that we say this because in the context of mental health we look at old as being bad yes absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, whereas in this case you it's know, not progress is it if it's old <laughs> pr pr precisely yeah. i mean but in this case you know this is something that is quite old but actually mm. it, it, it felt falls very well within something quite futuristic and innovative that yeah. we're trying to do so um it, it, it's important that we don't um, conflate the two and um i, I think the, r the reason why music to empower is so important is because it benefits all and it touches all, and that's why it's a good example of co-production. Mm. I mean, from a kind of like branding standpoint, you know, I don't even look at myself as like a co-production guy, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, you, you probably uh, see this as well, Chris, but I kind of look at myself as a PR guy in a way, yeah? Yeah, yeah, in yeah. the sense that we go and get these stories and then we put them out. Yeah. You know, it appeases our regulators, you know, mm. who come in and say, oh, you know, these guys are doing something about service user engagement. Mm. Um, you know, it appeases our customers, as in terms of our commissioners, the people who are funding the placements within our services. Um, and, you know, they're like, oh, you know, great, Signet's doing something that these other people that we're paying aren't doing. So, yeah. you know, th it's something positive for the people that we're sending them. 100%. It improves the service user experience of the people that are actually using our yeah. services, most importantly, and um, reassures family carers as well. Um, you know, and, and, and again, that's something that's really important. All, all whilst also, you know, combating stigma and, and you know, peddling co-production to the wider community ecosystem. I mean, th th there's even the departmental arguments that I can come to you wi within, um, you know, the support that it has for recruitment, for instance, mm -hmm. um, in people seeing these kind of videos online and um, seeing some of the, the work that we do within um, the co-production team and, and saying, hey, hey, this is an organization I want to go and work for. Yeah. So, so um, I think, you know, I would definitely urge your viewers to go and have a look at Music to Empower if they haven't seen it. Um, and um, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. Well, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, we'll, we'll include some of the Music to Empower stuff in here. You should I'll put like a little cutaway or something in. Ex exactly, mate. We're going to put it somewhere here, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, to, Maybe so, even uh, beforehand, yeah. so then people know exactly like 
what it is that we're talking about. Like, absolutely. It, it, you know, the, you, I mean, you mentioned um, the the, woke, the most recent one earlier, uh, Chris, yes. because it was it was I was actually thinking about it on the tube as well, yeah, nice. um, on, on the way over, because it kind of stuck in my head. And I, I would really urge people to go and look at that video, because in essence, what we're talking about here with music to empower is in essence being able to showcase people's talents and abilities despite their circumstances. Mm. You know, a, a lot of people look at being detained under the Mental Health Act or sectioned, as, as horrible the word is, um, as being the end of the line. Mm. But in, in many respects, it can be the start as yeah. well for some people. Yeah. And a lot of people come into our services have never been to a professional recording studio, let alone being on radio or being able to shoot a professional music video. Yeah. So being able to provide the resources and support to be able to do those things is really, really key. And if you look at the latest um, episode, you'll see two guys, one of them doesn't even have leave. He can't even, he's not even allowed to go out in the community. Yes. But we don't let that stop it. We shoot the music video in the hospital. You see the fences in the background and there's something beautiful about that. There's yeah. something, um, you know, so powerful in the sense that, you know, th there's a physical barrier within this, this hospital environment, but there's a, a, a barrier that can be broken in terms of, your, your aspirations and your talents and abilities which yeah. can't be contained absolutely and you can still absolutely. be played on radio we just played him on you got this we just got played on bbc radio the other day oh brilliant we've done nice. an interview on That's it so good. and he was listening it to, to, to it oh. from his hospital bedroom and and there's something about that you know that that's powerful you create your own space don't you in a way you create your own space in the environment you live in and and you kind of have ownership over that space and you say that music definitely definitely does that and i think is it david and levi are just yeah they're, they're so good in that video. I will definitely, definitely play some of it in, in, in this for sure. Yeah. I think even what I found as, you know, was um, at the very beginning of, the, of that video, not the music video, but the, just the overall video of which the music video was part of, was um, a person working there saying, saying, music to empower is one of the reasons I joined and it's one of the reasons I, 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 I stay. I yeah. You know, I think that for me just goes to show that it's, you know, it's not about just slinging those job ads out there and, and just going, come and work for us. It's about showing those stories and actually proof behind those stories that draw people in. Because if, if, if it's something that, you know, I think the goosebumps effect is, is a pretty good, pretty good gauge on things really. If someone watches that and feels good about it, then actually they might well think about a company like Signet, you know, healthcare in, 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 in the future. So mm. I think I think it's fantastic. And how many how many videos have you have you done with uh, music to empower? Do, I think we've done like over thirty videos now. Nice. Um, some are, are still kind of yet to be released. Yeah, okay. um, we've done a really good like follow up one uh, recently as well, which is oh, really nice. good. Kind okay. of chasing people up in the community, seeing yeah. how they're getting on and, and seeing their journeys continue, which is really powerful. And yeah, no, I, 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 I just completely agree with you. And I, I think that um, you know. A lot of the staff who I speak to from other organisations who have come over to work with us or even like our current staff, for example, who are already with us, who, who mentioned what you mentioned, Chris, um, it's about being able to do something different to, to what, um, you know, uh, competitors are doing as yes. well, right? And um, I, I think definitely with Music to Empower, being able to do that, but it's not, it, it goes far beyond that as well. You know, there's lots of other important projects that we do across the organisation, but there's something really important that I saw a few years back. I think it was... Um, on the health service journal and it said um you know you, and you've definitely heard this before yeah. but um an asset uh, an organization's greatest asset is its employees yeah 100 and um i think sometimes that a lot of organizations have recruitment teams which work in silos yeah. whereas you know w with us at signet you've probably been able to see firsthand with the work that you've done with us chris is that, that it's very much a partnership working yeah um, totally. you know work w with our staff with the service users harnessing the different skills and projects that are happening within the organization to be able to support recruitment mm. which in turn drives quality and services experience mm. you know a lot of a lot of this stuff is reciprocal you know in, in nature and then um, i guess it, th this element of co-production is about us working together for all of our benefits and extends far beyond you know kind of working with myself as an expert by experience or services or or, or, or whatever it, it doesn't even have to be in health and social care yeah you know this is a concept that, um, as you're very familiar with, Chris, is about working with people that you, you have an impact on, about sharing stories and about um, creating partnerships that are meaningful and different to what others are doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I think that's really key. Well, it's, um, you mentioned earlier on about you don't see yourself as being in co-production. You know, kind of from where, that kind of where my mind went straight to kind of connecting to what you've just said is, is 
we're kind of we're, we're there to just really find the stories, find those people, and just bottle it up. Really, kind of it's that it's a it's that kind of journalistic intent yeah, and mindset, which is just like you know we're we're the ones who just go around and find the people and just then capture and curate that content and, and that is what marketing is about really not just employer marketing that's what marketing should, and, and, and should all be j- about. just to say that you know it's so important that you said that because i, I literally say this all the time when we when the topic of co-production comes up we've got something called the people's council oh, which yes. is all yeah, about yeah. you know people coming together and all that Lovely. stuff that that was something that was chosen by the service users do you know really? what I mean? And, yeah. and it, it started at kind of like Derby and a couple of other, other sites um, kind of followed suit. And then, you know, we supported it to kind of grow, grow bigger and put, put it into our governance structure and into kind of yeah. policies and so on. Yeah. Same way with Music to Empower, if we were to actually look at the roots of that, that was actually a service user that just wanted to shoot a music video in one Brilliant. of his bedrooms. Love it. And, yeah. and then it, t- it turns into that national initiative. Mm. So th- that's why, I, you know, I, I, I kind of go back to that point in the sense that, you know, I don't even think I've ever done anything at Signet my, off my own back, yeah. where I've actually went and said, oh yeah, like, let's do this initiative, like do blah, blah, blah. A lot of it is stuff that's happening out there already. And like you said, it, it very much is that journalistic yeah. uh, approach. It is that marketing approach of saying, hey guys, look at this piece of best practice. Is this something we should replicate? Is this something you're interested in? Mm. And then, you know, people get on board, you, then you see a domino effect. And then before you know it, it's something that is just a norm. Totally. And, you know, and, and I think that that is the important thing. So I, I, th- that's why I've got a lot of ratings for like our kind of comms team and our marketing team. and just generally because it's about raising awareness yeah. and you know sharing best practice is the key to innovation within our sector yeah. so um i think it's something that's really really important so earlier on i mentioned about about um, you being very active on, on linkedin um and very much being a a big advocate for what you, you and the organization does well, why is linkedin in kind of important for you and why are you active on linkedin in, in all honesty, I think LinkedIn is probably just a bit more of a safer space than Twitter. Yeah, yeah, true, <laughs> you know, true. You, you haven't got as many trolls and things. I, you know, I was getting like a lot of abuse on Twitter and stuff. Right, okay. um, you know, like I was getting, I was getting like all sorts of stuff. I was getting like racial abuse and all of that stuff. Wow, okay, Jeez. I was, I, You know, I, I, was get, I, I was getting like a lot of, um, you know, just you, weird, weird, weird things happen on Twitter. Like, you, know, you come across someone who end up like stalking you and stuff. This mm. is, it's, it's a bizarre place. Um, but I mean, LinkedIn is just a little bit more of a safe space. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can absolutely. you can talk about things, and I guess because it's less anonymous in a sense. You know, there's not many people yeah. that I think go and make a, like a. It's quite an elaborate thing to do to go and make a, link, a fake LinkedIn profile. Ooh, yeah, true. Where it's a little bit easier to do like a, a, a fake Twitter one and just like hide behind like a, a, a you know a, a username and a, a, a no display picture. Yeah. Um, whereas I think even LinkedIn has got a little bit more security as well around how you can sign up. Yeah. And the reason why having that safe space is important because you can kind of, in essence, um, be yourself. And I know that's quite weird because a lot of people tend to be more professional on LinkedIn because it's seen as more oh, yeah. of a professional platform. This is a professional yeah. network, yeah, yeah. But actually, <laughs> because of that feeling of being a safe space, you can be yourself a little bit more. Yeah, Obviously, true. within means, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not like topless in any of my, <laughs> on, in my photos or anything like that. Yeah. Not that I have a beach body. But the, the, the thing is, I think um, what, the, the important thing about LinkedIn is that we can have like a discussion about things without worrying about kind of, you know, getting hammered about something, do, yeah. you, do you know what I mean? The thing is with Twitter, everyone's got an opinion mm. and, and stuff like that. LinkedIn, you, you tend to be around like-minded people who kind of semi know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it, it might be people with opposing views, but um, you know, no, I've, I've never had anyone kind of like abuse me on LinkedIn, yeah. if that makes sense. And the reason why that's important is because we can then showcase our work. We can have those discussions. I can kind of do, it's kind of, you know, guerrilla campaigning, if you like, um, from a mental health uh, narrative with clinicians in a safe space. And, you know, people pick up on that and they see that and engage with it and they like yeah. it. I think we were just talking earlier about, um, you know, a, a nurse who I like, kind of messaged like five years ago. Yes, brilliant. And, um, and you know, it, I, I kind of were just, uh, so, I, so I think I sent a message over, uh, what did I say? I said, um, Come, why don't you come and work for Signet? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't get a response. So that was five years ago. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. five years ago. And I, I didn't get a response. Like a lot of people that message, some people message you back, some people don't. Yeah. 
and um, you know this this uh, particular person didn't. I mean, she messaged me the other day, which is five years later, yeah. to say that oh, after five years I'm finally considering it. And then we got talking. Blah, 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 I spoke to her, and I kind of obviously asked the natural question of, you know, why five years, right? Yeah. And to, the, what was important for her is that you know that within that five years, I've been able to see all your posts and your content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's made me kind of think that, you know what, this is an organisation I want to go and work for. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been here for five years now. I'm not really seeing, I've seen these people, these people grow. And in many respects, when you think about it, um, you know, Chris, engaging with people online, sometimes it's like you feel a part of their journey. Yeah, yeah? Totally. You see people grow up. You know, yeah. and I think that's a big thing about reality TV and all of this stuff as well. Like mm. you feel kind of invested into a program, yeah. uh, and um, you know, many a lot of people who I follow on LinkedIn for many years, particularly like kind of um, people who might be, you know, in my generation and all that. Like I feel like they're my mates and stuff, although I may never even met them. Right? Yeah, it's just because you see people every day, you see their posts, you know that what their thoughts are, mm. and then it gets to a point where you you you, you really think. Um, I, I guess in, in, in this person's perspective, for you know, uh, I, I want to give this a shot, and you know, yeah. within a couple of weeks, she was she was, she was actually um, in, after introducing her to our recruitment team was um, interviewed and onboarded, which is uh, you know, pr pretty fast. So, so big up the recruitment team, but I mean, it, 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 that's just like a classic story of how kind of content isn't necessarily an instant thing. Sometimes organisations, and you probably appreciate this the most, Chris. I think sometimes mm -hmm. organisations probably they think you can put a video out there and somehow that's going to translate into a thousand nurses or a thousand employees immediately. Mm. <laughs> Organisations need to understand that it's a journey and it could take Absolutely. five years. Absolutely. But within that five years, it's, you're changing a culture and you're changing public opinion and staff opinion on yourself. You know, people yeah. need to see a commitment. Totally. For, it's like, you know, a, a, you look at products, you know, yeah, you, can, you can buy a product and it may not be right for you. And, you know, you go, OK, that's fine, whatever. I, I haven't really lost anything from that. But talk about high ticket item, a career, you know, and choosing the right job. And a job is such a big part of one's life. And that feeling of autonomy over something, that mastery over something, feeling you're giving something to, you know, to, to, to what you're doing. And I think a lot of a lot of times in the recruitment world, it's seen as being more transactional. It's, it's kind of what are the benefits if they join us, what can we give them? As opposed to going, look, there aren't always passive, uh, active job seekers. Even passive job seekers suggest that someone is, is looking out for something. There'll be lots of people out there who are happy with what they do and they're not prepared to make the move. That's why it takes a long time. You know, it can be immediate, but that thing of getting content out there that is, that is just tap, tap, tapping away and just going, I'm here and reminding people about what that organisation is about, I think is really important. So you can get quick results, but I think there is too much focus on that sometimes. And actually long term, like with what you're doing is brilliant. You know, you've got a message, you, got, you message someone all those years ago <laughs> and now they've joined. You know, that's, that's fantastic. And it must be great to see that thread when you pop into LinkedIn. And, you, 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 yeah. it's, and no, but it's weird because it's like within the last few months I've noticed a lot of that. So, yeah, so it, it, that was just one example. But, my, but the reason why it's important is to show that like sometimes it, it's, it, these, these are long-term investments, isn't yes, it? Yeah. And organisations need to be committed to kind of like content, marketing, all of that stuff 100%. for an extended period of time. It's not about just doing like a, a one-off piece because people might see it and then, you know, forget about it the next day or something unless you're going to cons consistently be pushing out <laughs> that same video that you've done. Yeah. So, so, you know, it has to be a constant thing and, it, you know, I, I, I think it's something that's really, really important. What you're doing with Music to Empower and what we've been talking about is, I think, very much about capturing those stories that happen in an organisation, curating them and putting them out there so when someone is ready to join, or they're not even thinking about applying for a job. You know, they've got content there to look at. And over time, that then turns out to be someone who, who messages you saying, I've joined, and they, you know they've joined for the right reasons. And, yeah. you know, fingers crossed for, for, a, for a happy career for, and, for them uh, at Signet. The joiners are the best recruiters as well, right? Yes. You yeah. know, when they come over, they're still in touch with all their old, old colleagues, particularly yeah. within our sector, because, you know, uh, a, a, a nurse is, is is someone that is equally as valuable in one organisation to another. Yeah. You know, same as a doctor, whoever it may be. And um, a lot of the time, when people come over, you know, 
I, I, I know I noticed that you know there's a lot of engagement from their colleagues where they last were before, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, you know they start to get interested too. And that, I've always find that really important because I noticed that sometimes when we have someone start an organisation, quite a few others would also come and join. Yeah, right? okay, yeah, yeah. And um, I always found that interesting because I feel like where organisations don't focus on the staff experience and the content and showcasing people's, mm. um, you know, stories and stuff. Um, people don't feel as valued. Totally. And then if I go and move somewhere and I'm not that buzzing about it, you know, we're mates, we're working together on a ward. I move to another organisation. You say to me, Raf, how's this new organisation that you moved to? Oh, same old, mm. same old. You know, I'm even thinking of coming back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Why does it make that change? Yeah, you, so yeah. like you're not going to be so bad. Actually, mm. if I was to go over and say, oh, you know what, they're doing lots of innovative stuff here. You know, they're mm. doing stuff that we were never doing there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, then you start to get interested as well. So I, I, I'm, I sincerely feel that, you know, um, uh, you, you know, you really get it, Chris, in terms of the importance of storytelling, the importance of things. Because although your, your intention may be semi-different, yeah. You also understand the reciprocal nature of it in the sense that from a, a staff perspective, as a staff member, it makes me feel valued totally. that the yeah. organisation wants to know my story. Absolutely. That you're putting me out there that, 100%. you know, like I'm important as well. I'm mm. part of this. Mm. And, and um, you know, equally for a service user, um, a family carer, whoever it may be, we feel more invested in the organisation yeah. when, when you're, you know, using our stories uh, to, to, to help with the, the wider thing. So it's something that's reciprocal for everyone. Totally. I think that's, uh, that's I think the, the, sp the space around storytelling absolutely is part of that. And I think also about opinion, because I, I found that if you get, if you get staff talking about a topic, they then, when they finish that, realise they know a lot of stuff. You know, they have other people going, oh, you know, yeah, that's an interesting point you make. I really like that idea. And then they add to that conversation. I think that is where you have proper kind of employee uh, advocacy and yeah it's it's been great doing, doing I mean the podcast the yeah. podcasts are like a really good example yeah, aren't they? Good, yeah. because like a lot of a lot of stuff that I come across you know <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I, 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 I like I, I was it see me, me at a staff member they tell me a story and I think oh you know what? this will make a really good podcast yeah. I mean like I remember once it happened I mean I said oh you know what? I need to tell Chris and Rowan that about this good, yeah <laughs> but I forgot yeah. But then I saw the person on the podcast anyway saying it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, you pick up on it. But I, 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 I was just like, you know, that, that, that's something else. And, you know, I feel like having that outlet for staff to be able to talk about their experiences, their journeys and all of that is, it, it's just, it's amazing. Because yeah. I, I, I listen to every single one of those podcasts. Yeah, good man. That, yeah, you, nice. you know, and I, I feel like it's, it's it, it really, it, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, well, I will definitely drop some uh, links into the episode description about that. But Please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up later. Thank you. Thank you, mate. I'm a dreamer. I woke up in a beamer. Lifestyle free now. So I'm feeling like a dreamer. Floating high, the mind's right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. I'm a dreamer, visions of driving in a beamer. Top down, sun's out, living life cleaner. New sound, music coming through the speaker. Elevate my mind, now I'm seeing much clearer. New day, living. Living life in a new way, working on my craft, tie it up like a shoelace. I do play, cooling off like a Kool-Aid. Living life free, so I gotta say hooray. Rolling with the times, you can call me Rizla. Writing these rhymes in my mind's a picture. Keep on dreaming, there's no need to switch up. I keep on dreaming, I can never switch up. Aspirations of six figure deals. Treating myself to a new set of wills. Done with the drugs, I don't need no pills. High off of life, how I get my thrills. Dreaming. Floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right. Dreaming, floating high, got my eyes right shut and the feelings right.